I'm glad to have you all here for our national poetry event. <coughs> this event is joined uh, with Misa the Library and uh, sponsored by the League of Canadian Poets and the Con uh, Canada Council of the Arts. We are marked the 16th birthday of National Poetry Month. And uh, this year's theme is Banners. So I will try to, yeah, Banners. So I will start with uh, my stories and the poems and uh, we'll show you how the balance are so important in our life and in our nature, the, the world. So you can see from the slide, my, my name is Anna Ng. I started in writing in 2004. At that time, I started writing in 2004 and uh, at that time, I made a lot of notable pen friends. Many of us have never met, so I hope someday we can meet. After I read the famous poem, a famous poem, When You're Old, by who? By Yeats, yes, right? I was touched. I wrote my own. When you're oh, this is not. When you're old. I read When You're Old. Sorry. When you're old, after years, when you're old, I may arrive at night without your expecting, sitting by a quiet fire. I will watch you sleep. I may kiss your forehead, where time pours deep wisdom. I will caress your rough palm and soothe your incomplete wishes. The fire will slowly die out. Falling snow will cover my footprints, and you, you may forget the recurring use of your dreams and your poems in print, recalled by someone who wanders <coughs> under the moon. So you see, we <laughs> this is a way of my balance. So I use my poem to express the, my missing and my longing. And, uh, when I was young, my English teacher told me, people are divided into two types. Guess which two? Dogs and cats. Yeah, dogs and cats. <laughs> I was born in dog year, so I believe I was a dog. But my English teacher told me, you're a cat. <coughs> and uh, I found in my poems, in fact, I mentioned a lot cats, not dogs. So I will read one for you tonight. Late night. Late night. The cat huddles in a corner. Tonight, he wouldn't go anywhere. His half-open eyes make me nervous. My pink dress is half off, skin shining like snow. Mona Lisa in the mirror smiles and hesitates. A spider on the wall enjoys a moth. So, <laughs> thank you. Maybe I'm a cat, but definitely I'm a Chinese, right? My book review revealed this book. They said it provides readers a unique take on both Chinese and Canadian culture. So I believe I'm a good balance, right? I can take advantage of both cultures. So I guess I inherited the Chinese traditional poetry the way, use image to express our feeling. I also adapt the Western culture's way to express your feeling directly. So now I want to read a poem tributed to Two poets. One is a Chinese famous Asian poetry, poet, Li Po. Another one is England, English poet, Ted Hughes. So I will read one to you. After reading Ted Hughes, Full Moon and Little Frida. After reading Ted Hughes, Full Moon and Little Frida, I fall in love with you, Moon. Seeing you step back, like a timid artist, listening to the night, 
You come out, a pale lifted. Moon, they are gone. They left you watching over the river. How many years since? And you watch the small village becoming a floating island. Among rows of windows, the night flows, and I'm wide awake. How much I wanted to imitate Li Po, dancing with his white sleeves, a humming from his burning heart, night after night, inviting you for a drink. The wine never drained, yet he drowned in the silver river. Moon, lift your bucket, come out once more. I won't make a sound. Actually, I think I make a lot of noise today, right? <laughs> okay, do you have pets? Do you have pets? Yeah. Good. So when my son was five years old, he asked us for pets. <coughs> But we are so busy, we bought him fish. <laughs> he was disappointed. Of course, fish is not a pet. I agree, so I wrote this poem. Fish in a house. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me. Fish in a house. You named me once, then forgot. I don't blame you. What's the point of naming a fish? You dutifully feed me. I should thank you, I guess, no matter how cold the water. Now and then, I worry. I outlive you. This house is another water tank. You don't have any gills. When night comes, you dream and I dream too. There, I teach you how to swim, how to live empty. So, I believe everyone has dreams. It's even fish, right? Fish have dreams. We all have dreams, especially when we, was young. we were young. How many of us pursued our dream? Please raise your hand if you pursue your dream. Oh, good, good. Wow, so congratulations. When I watch a little girl blow away dandelion, I wrote this, dandelion. <coughs> dandelion, the say you have an umbrella to fly freely. <coughs> But, <clears throat> sorry. But when I look through, I know there are your gray hairs. I cannot blow them away or take them out. I can only ask you again and again. Why do you wait so long, so long to take off? So, so I believe every the life, sometimes it's tough. We must give up our dreams. In 2007, I almost lost my balance and gave up my dream. So at that time, I, because I love poetry so much, so I want to continue. But I also felt my writing had reached its limitation. And I work in IT field, so you know, I always need to learn new things to keep updated. So I struggled. So I thought I must quit and focus on my job. So for a whole week, I didn't read and didn't write. And this whole week, I'm restless. And at the end, I wrote a poem to say goodbye. To say goodbye, farewell to sunflowers. A million, a million arrows are aimed at the sky, yet the sun still not shot down. Glancing back, the golden faces are soaked with tears. 
Morning grasses grow wild upon my eyes, burn flames in the wind. Those dark weeds and swimming fish, those floating clouds and breezes are far behind. In turning, I lost my <coughs> way and feel the lotus core in pieces. With arrows shifting through my hand, I see sunset in crimson. So after I, after I wrote this poem, I found I'm really, very really sad. I couldn't say goodbye. So I, so I told myself I should find a balance. I should find a way to balance. So I take the creative writing course in University of Toronto at night. <laughs> and I try work hard to keep up with my job. And it worked. My final, my final project for the creative writing uh, was 40 pages of poems. And uh, it was shortlisted for the award in University of Toronto. And the, uh, the judges suggested me to submit to publisher. In 2010, the uh, Mosaic Press accepted to publish it, and in 2011, the published it. So here it is. And I'm glad I didn't uh, give up. I find balance. So when people ask me, what's the meaning for writing? What's the meaning for writing? I told them, when reality builds walls, Writing opens doors. For me, it's true. It opens a lot of doors. OK, and now I'm preparing my second book, Inhale the Silence. I will read <coughs> one poem from it. Oh my god, I need to find the poem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I forgot to print it. OK, so as you can see from the slide, it's a bra, painted okay. bra. It's an artist. It's an artist named Mary Clear. She is an artist in USA. She painted the bra for, to support the cancer research. So I was inspired and I wrote this poem. The flowering of the bra. I want to wear it for a mother who suffers from breast cancer. I want to remember blue skies and forget her not. No matter how fragile her moons wane. I want to wear it for our earth, who induce violent exploitation. I want to <coughs> consider bleeding hearts as my sisters, who shiver from shelters and continue shocks. I want to wear it for my children, who have a right to live in peace. I want to picture the flourishing future with a juice skies and a green planet. Thank you very much. For me, I really, I really think balance is very important in our daily life and also for our nature, for environment. So I think this, uh, this year, this, uh, the, the poetry Poetry uh, Month event will help everyone to understand balance is important. <laughs>